Welcome back to AOPB Roundup. I'm Ryan. I'm here with your daily roundup looking at the kickoff night of this 4th of July weekend. Got four games to go over out of six games coming up tonight. So we're just going to dive right on into it. We'll kick this off in New York where the Barnstormers won their fifth out of seven matchups with the Revolution this season. Lancaster handed the ball over to Augie Silk while York looked to get a strong outing out of Jake Welch. Barnstormers fell behind early as they often do. I gotta do a little bit of math on just how often they're falling behind early. We're like scoring like 17 runs early and then giving up 18 because it's kind of just how they operate at this point. York got the early lead by scoring three runs in the second, not even needing a hit to do it. Four walks and fielding error will do that. York gets a fourth run the third off of Jan Sanchez leadoff home run, but the Barnstormers offense cannot be stopped. Two runs in the third, two runs in the fourth. That works a four to four tie after four innings. Lancaster took the lead in the top of the six on an Anderson De La Rosa solo homer, but York answered right back in the bottom half of the inning, tying the game on a JC and Carnacion double. However, the final three innings of this one were all Lancaster. Offense scored in each inning and the bullpen executed nicely, allowing only one hit and no runs. Lancaster battles to take game one of this four game set nine to five. Jake Welch goes five plus innings, allowing four runs on three hits, walked eight. That's a problem. Struck out two. Jake's really struggling this year with finding the strike zone. He's missing the zone low on a ton of pitches and had a couple calls last night that, one, would have been strikes in the old zone, but he also had, a, I'd say, three or four pitches throughout the night that, according to the pitch tracker that we see just through the Atlantic League site, those were in the zone called ball. So that might need a look there. I think he got a bad break. Three of those pitches came in walks, so that might explain also the eight walk problem. But we're going to have to keep an eye on Jake Welch as he adjusts to that issue, not being able to use the bottom of the zone the way he's used to. Augie Silk, he allowed five runs, three earned over five innings, two hits, six walks, six Ks. Lancaster bullpen looked good tonight. They really needed a good outing. Four innings, two hits, no runs credited to them. No walks, four Ks. Anderson De La Rosa, he gets the game ball for Lancaster. Two for four with a home run, a walk, and three RBI. Lancaster keeps pace in the North Division and gets back to 500 at 16 and 16. York drops to 13 and 19, five games out of the division lead. Up on Long Island, the Ducks got offensive reinforcements in the form of Ian Kinsler, Vladimir Frias, and Danny Valencia. However, we retreat to a pitcher's duel between the Blue Crabs and Ducks. Mike Bolsinger, he only threw three innings, but he looked much better. He needed a good outing. One run, three hits, one walk, four Ks. That is so good to see. Can't imagine how good this is to see if you're the front office in Long, on, on Long Island. Sorry, Long Island. On Long Island, I get it. Good Lord. Southern Maryland's Sam Burton was slanging it today. Six and a third innings of shutout work. Two hits, four walks, four Ks. Andres Brusino and Matt Latos finish the shutout for Southern Maryland. Brusino has only allowed two runs in his first 16 and two-thirds innings this season. Matt Latos gets his fifth save of the campaign. Ducks get held to just three hits in this one, struggling for consistency offensively. Lone run this one came on a second inning Dario Pisano RBI single to bring home Cesar Trejo. Trejo, he was recently sent to the Blue Crabs as the player to be named later in a trade from a while back. So uh, that was with the Rockers. He started out the season great for the Rockers. So that's a great add now for Southern Maryland. Sam Burton, he gets the game ball for his shutout start. Sam's ERA, get this, on June 20th, after allowing seven earned runs and four and a third against York, was 9.87. Since then, all he's done is allowed one run in 12 and a third innings over two starts. ERA is now down to 6.07, dropped it more than three and a half runs. So hopefully now he's heading in the right direction. You can look over his first 30 and two thirds innings in the Atlantic League, 9.1 ERA. In his last 12.1 innings, 0.73 ERA. Seems to be adjusting a little bit to the Atlantic League level of play. That would be great news for Southern Maryland, who could really use that help in their rotation as they try to stay ahead in the division now that they got up to first. Speaking of that fight to stay in first, this is a huge series for the North Division. This battle, four games, while Southern Maryland entered a half game up, they're now a game and a half up on the Ducks. The Ducks, I doubt that's a total coincidence. They brought in those offensive reinforcements just this weekend. I think the Ducks do not like to be anywhere but first place, and they're fighting for it hard. But they will have to continue to fight because the Blue Crabs have won 14 out of 17. Red hot. All that offense that we didn't see on Long Island must have found its way to Gastonia, where the Rockers and Honey Hunters got after it last night. Gastonia's Jay Goss and High Point's Craig Stem both got knocked around, leaving tonight's starts with ERAs over 10. High Point opened the scoring in the top of the second with a Stuart Levy home run. High Point tacked on three more to make it a 4-0 lead off the bat. Jake Skull hit his 10th homer for Gastonia in the bottom half of that inning. Another Gastonia run and another high point run before a two-run Mike Pappy home run in the bottom of the third left us at a 5-4 score after three innings. Everyone catching their breath there. High point made it a three-run lead in the fourth thanks to a Michael Russell home run 
and a Jared Mitchell RBI ground out. Gastonia gets tired of trailing. They hop into lead finally with RBI from Josh Sala, William Salas, and Adrian Gomez. Sorry, there's a lot of notes over here on this game. It's a dumpster fire. Eight to seven honey hires at that point, but Rockers answer right back. Four runs in the sixth inning. So Gastonia narrows that lead again, back down to 11 to 10 with a Mike Osinski two-run triple. He's still crushing Atlantic League pitching. DCRC would make it a 12 to 10 lead. Lucky he did because Josh Sala went deep in the ninth inning off John Fasola, but the Rockers get away with it, winning 12 to 11. Michael Russell, he gets the game ball in this one, going four for six with a home run. He's now batting 311 on the season. Somehow that's just his first game ball of the year. That's kind of wild that I guess every good game he's having just getting overshadowed barely by somebody. High point stays ahead of Gastonia, improving to 15 and 16. Now a game and a half ahead of the Honey Hunters and five and a half behind division leading Lexington. Speaking of Lexington, the Legends and Power got together for the first of six games this weekend. They got two doubleheaders, one Saturday, one Monday. Six games in four days, that's going to challenge any pitching staff, and things are already off to a bumpy start here. Lexington's Tyrell Harris got dragged out for nine runs over three and two thirds last night. West Virginia's Clinton Halone fared a bit better, allowing five runs over six innings of work. Five of the six pitchers used in this game allowed a run. The only one that didn't, Max Tannenbaum, only faced one batter. So it's off to a rough start for what could be a very long weekend for the pitching staffs here. Lexington answered a five-run first inning from the power with two runs in the second and three runs in the third to tie things up. West Virginia, though, fired right back. Two runs in the third, three runs in the fourth. We had a couple quiet innings then after that. Going into the seventh, West Virginia still up 10-5, to five, but one Lexington run the seventh and two in the ninth threatened but would not be enough. West Virginia wins 11-8. to eight. DJ Peterson and Keon Barnum both homered for Lexington. Barnum's OPS keeps climbing after a slow start, now up to 839. Edwin Espinal went deep for West Virginia. The offense was really spread out across the squads on this one, so tough call game ball-wise here. I went a little outside the box, Jovan Gonzalez. Jovi went two for two with a double and a walk in three plate appearances. Got four RBI before exiting this thing in a defensive swap. He's been getting back in a rhythm lately. He slumped for a little while, now he's back at it, and we support good things for our guy Yobi. Lexington's lost three of four. They need to collect some wins over the next five games. Big opportunity for them. They're in the lead. The Rockers, if you can bet on one thing, it's the Rockers aren't done. They're a good team. They're going to be collecting themselves and getting after it as we go down like the main heart of this season. So if you're Lexington, you got to collect all the wins you can right now. They got nine games, now eight with a rain out against West Virginia, who's at the bottom of the division. There's no reason they shouldn't be cashing out six of these games, if we're being honest. They've already dropped two of them. So they got to get after it for the rest of this weekend. Build that lead on the Rockers, expand that lead. I mean, the Rockers only have three games left to play. They, The Legends have five, so that's two games in hand right there if they can capitalize. So it's a big series going down on West Virginia right now. Keep an eye on what the Rockers have going. Keep an eye on what the Legends have going. Keep an eye on that Southern Maryland Long Island series, which is for the lead up top. We've got some great action over this holiday weekend. Glad you can enjoy it with me. 25% of the way officially through the Atlantic League season. I'm hoping at some point today to get some projections posted for what this looks like standings wise. If I can't, I'll get it done sometime this weekend or I won't. I don't know. I don't know what my own schedule looks like anymore. It's going great. I'll probably be in York tomorrow night to watch some things explode and to watch some baseball, obviously. Um, yeah. So you'll be getting some daily roundups from me, most likely every morning slash early afternoon. And we'll uh, have a good time this holiday weekend together. I'm Ryan with the LPB Roundup. Have a good one.